Well, Arab Australian Other is a new anthology of stories on race and identity by 25 Arab Australian writers. It aims to change perceptions by showing the huge diversity of nationalities, experiences and cultural identities amongst Arabs in Australia. To tell us more, we're joined by the editor of the book, poet and activist Sara Saleh, and author, teacher and founder of Sweatshop, Dr Michael Mohammed Ahmed. Thank you for thanks to both of you for Sarah. being here. Uh, Sarah, what was the motivation behind putting together the anthology? Uh, um, well, so many things. Where do I start? I think, um, you know, for so long, Arabs as a diverse group of people have been molded into this sort of whatever other is needed to sustain the myth of, you know, a successful multiculturalism. We've been written about and studied and talked at and spoken on behalf of. You know, we've been depicted, um, unfortunately, in you know, quite a negative way. So pop culture um, and media representation has, for the most part, really deprived us, uh, deprived us of, our, of our complexity and denied us of our humanity. And so I think uh, for us to be able to have this collection, which is really um, not about trying to prove anything to anyone, it's not us saying, you know, proving our humanity, it's us um, actually claiming and or reclaiming our space, it's us uh, celebrating ourselves, it's subverting the narratives, it's l literally an unequivocal we are here. Mohammed, does that resonate with you and why did you t decide to take part in this? Um, the uh, Arab Australian identity uh, has been one, as Sarah is pointing out, uh, that's been vilified and demonised uh, in particular after 9-11, and even shortly before that with things like the SCAF gang rapes. And uh, it's important, I think, for Australians to understand that if you want to know who we are, you're not going to learn that from a second-hand journalistic uh, tabloid um, uh, narrative, that, that you have to come to us. And in putting forward our stories, as, as writers, as intellectuals, as public figures, um, we, as Sarah pointed out, reclaim our narrative and reclaim our stories about our identities. Uh, and uh, you've been celebrated for your book, The Lebs, uh, which uh, is not just a, an uncritical assessment of your community as well. You're quite upfront about misogyny and sexism in, in your own community as well. But the way that the mainstream media has looked at, at that, you, you have an essay in this, in this piece where you start by talking about a headline that has dial a gun on it. Let's just take a look at the front page of the Daily Telegraph at the time. And can you, can you tell us some of the, the background to this and why it was so important to you? So the article was published on November 3rd, 1998. It was on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. And what's interesting about the article is that it constructs this group as a gang, a Lebanese gang specifically, and it promotes the idea that they could get a gun as easily as getting a pizza. Now, you can actually clearly see from the image itself that those boys were just having a really good time performing their ghetto gangster fantasies. The, the, the reality of the image is that it was a fiction and that the, um, that the boys were asked by the journalist to pose as these kinds of gangsters. And, and, and that was slapped on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. Now, you have to ask yourself if a you know, group of uh, boys of Anglo-Australian background were claiming to be a gang and were promoting this kind of fantasy, if that would f find itself on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. And so there was this kind of uh, shameless Australian news media that was perpetuating a racialized um, uh, image of these young men as uh, as gangsters and then shortly after that as sexual predators because that was 1998 by 2000 we we we, we the the scaf gang rapes took place and then just after that september 11 mm -hmm. which continued to create the arab australian identity as a, a folk devil where one moment we're drug dealers the next moment we're sexual predators and now all of a sudden we're also all potential terrorist suspects and so the stories that we tell and, and the critical and, and creative writing that we create is about subverting so much of those myths about our community. Uh, Sarah, in the introduction to the book, you talk about the, the way the generation, a generation was shaped by that turning point of September 11. Mm -hmm. What did that day mean and what was the difference between um, before that reality and after? 
I mean, I think, uh, as we said in the book, it, it was quite a watershed moment for a lot of us. I mean, who can remember, who can forget, sorry, uh, exactly what they were doing at that point in time, um, you know, when, when, you, when we heard the news. So I think it, it definitely was um, a turning point for us in terms of how we saw ourselves. But I also want to make clear that actually a lot of the sort of the racism and the othering that, um, you know, the writers in the book refer to and have experienced and have grown up with in Australia. Australia wasn't, you know, wasn't just, um, it didn't just start then. It, it's, it had been a long time coming, and the othering had been something that they, a majority of those writers experienced. So I think that. Um, this is, I guess, the point that we're trying to make, that it has been a part of the, you know, the daily experience of growing up here. But also in that same vein, we are more than that. We are more than the trauma. We are more than the pain. Uh, you know, for us, we are complex beings and we have a range of experiences. And it was really important to be able to talk about that and hear from these writers um, in that way. Yeah. You talk about Western feminist attitudes towards women in the in the Muslim world, and frequently, whenever there's a, a young girl who's trying to escape an authoritarian, theocratic family in Saudi Arabia, you know, it's this <laughs> incredible drama. She's stuck in an airport somewhere in Asia. We have to go and rescue her and give uh, give her uh, asylum. Do you feel that there's a hypocrisy, or do you do you feel that the the status of women's rights in the Muslim world is a is a uh, something worthy of attention from Western feminists? I mean. Of course I see that uh, there is a hypocrisy and there's a double standard there because we never contextualize it in terms of our own role and how we've come to exotify and um, I guess, uh, yeah, sort of uh, Im apply that white savior narrative to these women and deny them their agency as though there aren't uh, women at the front, at the forefront of this, of, of movements for rights, whether here in Australia, within our communities, Muslim communities, and uh, otherwise, uh, you know, women, coloured communities, but also in the Middle East. The, the point that I want to make, though, going back to the book, is that we don't just talk about that, and we don't need to just talk about that. I mean, I'm a Muslim, and I'm someone who identifies as Palestinian, Egyptian, Lebanese, but I don't always have to talk about the fact that I'm Muslim. Sometimes I'm just someone who who likes really bad TV shows and, you know, has uh, is terrible at every hobby I attempt. So maybe that's why I'm a writer. I don't know. But I think that I guess really what I'm trying to say is that uh, the, the book is about making sure that the next generation of Arab Australians don't have to experience what we experience, like looking, going to the bookshelf, going to a bookstore, going to the library. I didn't really get to pick and choose a book that had someone who looked like me or had my experience. And so for me, this is the book that we needed growing up. And I hope that the little Mohammeds and Saras out there uh, will have that. You know, this is a celebration of our triumphs and our battles and our experiences. It is an honor. Um, an honouring of our memories and our parents and our communities and that's, I guess, the best way to, that I, I can think we can honour that. Mohammed, who would you like to read this book and what would you like them to take away from it? Um, <clears throat> I want every Australian to read the book. I think uh, already we're seeing, even in this discussion so far, that the lack of nuance and a diversity when we're talking about um, our communities, so often, for example, we conflate Arab and Muslim identity, and we talk exactly. about them as though they're the same thing. But there are um, uh, Arab Christian Australian contributors to the book, and there is a, a very vibrant Christian Arab community in Australia that we tend to forget because we speak about our community as though Arab and Muslim are one and the same. And so I think that that kind of misconception and misunderstanding of the diversity and the complexity of our community means that it's actually an emergency, uh, like a, to me a national, a national emergency, that all Australians are engaging in this work and that are reading these, these books, you know, the Arab Australian Other Anthology and the, the individual books of the contributors in, in order to fully understand who you're talking to and who you're engaging with in your street. Um, and I want to make this really important observation that for us, the, the, these conversations are not just rhetorical. They're not just about us having hurt feelings. There have been very serious incidents that have taken place in the last 20 years in Australia that have actively destroyed the lives of so many of the members of our communities. The 2005 Cronulla riots where 5,000 white Australians viciously attacked and in some cases nearly killed people just because they happened to look Arab. And 
uh, very recently because of the conflation of Arab and Muslim, the way the Arab and Muslim community suffered horrendously at the hands of a white supremacist in Christchurch. These kinds of incidents dr drastically uh, affect our lives. And if we really want to have open and honest discussions with Australia, all Australians, about this kind of issue, then, then this kind of book needs to be in every Australian's hands. And there's no other way around it. Mohammed and Sarah, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Thank we you. hope you love it as much as we do. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.